we're going to focus on other fake made up histories. So I made this video before I called it Hoax 1850 Historical Interviews. And the reason I say 1850 is the people in the interviews, it's 1927 through 1929 when these interviews are done. The characters being interviewed supposedly were born before 1850. Well, the thing is, the people being interviewed aren't real people. They're actors playing older people. And I took a lot of flack from people saying, you're saying that they're not that old. Blah, 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 blah. People can look that good and be 110. Well, I, I call bullshit on it. Just look, there are two guys. One I call skinny, the other one I call 110. Okay? And you'll recognize them from the other video. They play different older people. I got here on the Monday morning, and for two nights I slept in the factory because I couldn't get home. On the Wednesday I walked from Jersey City to Newark, New Jersey. Oh, I won't Why, really, really? We had to tunnel out from the basement. I had to drive a tunnel using the snow. Way out in the middle of the other side of the street. That's where I had to go. That's some How'd you get out? Oh, I got my way out. I'd get down to the barn to feed the horse. Oh, I was out in the city. You got to feed the horse out? I was down to the city hall. Why? That day? The price of eggs going up during the blizzard? That down on the corner does That's pretty high, wasn't well, it? Well, it went higher. Coming way up to the top, coming way up. That was remarkable. How about you folks? You like my eggs? Yes. I had chickens and they went on strike. <laughs> How many years had you been voting in the time of the big blizzard? Well, I hadn't been voting yet. <laughs> I wasn't to the voting age. There's some questions regarding, you know, about the snow. Well, well, how about the snow? How deep well, was look, it where you were? The snow was about seven feet deep, and in some places the front of the house was covered completely. I and heard the, the two story and the half houses, you couldn't see. Why, I don't exactly call it work. You know what work is. You see many things happen change in your day, Mr. King? Oh, yes, yes, yes. We live in a world of change. The trees are just the same as they were when I was a boy, only larger. The sun rises in the east and sets in the west. But when I was a boy, we didn't have the telegraph, and we didn't have the telephone, of course, nor the electric lights, nor any of these other things which have come out to bother us and help us. The good old days were pretty good, pretty good. Don't you boys think that you're living in just the best time in the world's history? It's first rate, but it's no better than uh, our fathers had, and I don't believe it's very much better than our grandchildren. Yes, yes, that's Hudson over there. Nice little city. Why, I remember very well, looking out of my window, I would see anywhere from 10 to 20, hardly ever less than 10 sailing vessels on the river. And now I don't see uh, more than one in three months. And very few steamboats. Everybody went to New York then. If they wanted to go in uh, Duluth style, why, uh, they'd take a steamboat. If they want to go cheap, they go on one of our river sloops.
gentlemen, this is what is, this vehicle is what is known as the Concord Coach, manufactured by Abbott Downing Company in Concord, Massachusetts. The average speed at that time was about six miles an hour. Uh, that was considered fast for a stage, but probably slow for an automobile. This particular coach has a seating capacity for 15. It truly and accurately represents the stages of, of the California Stage Company that, uh, that operated through California in the 50s and 60s. I haven't drank water for 50 years. It rust pipes, and it surely rusts your inside. The best thing to drink is beer, coffee, tea, a high ball once in a while. But the country's dry now, Mr. Draper. They say it is, but is it? Oh, but the country's dry now. They say so, but is it? What do you think of the new long dresses, Mr. Draper? I like them short. Shorter the better. The knee is a joint, not an entertainment. You're pretty spry for a 90-year-old Civil sure. War veteran. Sure am. Aren't you tired? Don't you want a drink? A drink of what? Water, of course. Nothing doing. Can you remember, Ma, the wedding day, 75 years ago? Yes, ma'am. What about it? Well, it was a beautiful day. He don't know it. One thing about it. you talking in that How old are you and Pa, Ma? I am 93, and Pa is 96. How many years have you lived in this house? Fifty-five. Are the people, young people of today, anything like the young people when you were young? Why, well, yeah. I don't see why they ain't just about the same. They're just as good then as they are now. Well, who was the boss? Myself. The, did you, father, ever have any quarrels? No, we never did. Have any quarrels at all. Had a little spats. Same as anyone does. But never anything was serious. No, never anything serious. <laughs> hey, you remember 75 years ago? Yes. Well, what about it? What about it? Yeah. Well. Talk up loud. That stable house that I was built last year. Oh, fiddlestick on your stable. Yes. He wants to know if you will love me as well as you did when we was married. Well, I suppose so. Don't say I suppose so. Well, yes, then. Uh, wow. I've been settled. I should have. Uh, I got my hat on. Why don't you want it on Saturday, do you? No, you can't. So I put it on Saturday, I. Right? <laughs> uh. Ain't you gonna kiss me? Mm, you can, Miguel. <laughs> ah, go ahead. Kiss me! Yeah, what? Dad, I'm satisfied, yeah. I'm satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> Forget it now. I've been married 75 years, and I'm very happy that I have lived so long. All right. Uh, Grammar and Grammar, I'm very glad to be here today to help to celebrate your 75th wedding anniversary. It was quite remarkable. These two old couples were married at the time, six years before the inauguration of President Lincoln, at the time that President Franklin Pierce was President of the United States in 1855. I was going to tell him about that. I got to go. You can start now.
Well, Mac, I guess I'm the oldest traveling salesman on the road in the United States. How old are you, Uncle Charlie? Ninety-two years old and sixty-eight years on the road. How old are you, Mac? Yeah, I'm nearly eighty-six years old and sixty years on. Uh, years old and sixty years on the road. They tell me that you're the uh, trader horn salesman of the United States. Well, I have traveled somewhat. I've traveled. Oh, I've traveled over travel. two million five hundred thousand miles, which means about uh, one hundred times around the world. You must have paid a lot of hotel bills in that time, Mac. Something over ninety thousand dollars in hotel bills alone. But, Uncle Charlie, I'm afraid that you and I will not pay very many more hotel bills because the high-pressure modern traveler of today will drive us off the road. Oh, no, no, Mac. The modern travelers do not last long. We do. The outlook for 1929 is great, and all we've got to do is to dig and work. Well, I guess you're right. crossing the Hudson River for about 47 years, and during that time, I have made 465,600 trips. I think this is enough for any man. I retire in, to give the younger man a chance, and intend enjoying my remaining years in viewing some parts of the country which heretofore I have had no opportunity only to read about.
Well, it's interesting that they would focus on that because it gets into this pre-1850 where it seems in my recent research that anything before 1850 gets really sketchy. And the people around at that time were either orphan children or controllers, pretty much. And if you look at people's family histories, um, if, they, if they didn't migrate, um, their own family history gets sketchy when you go back p past 1850. Um, the artifacts are few and far between, and the buildings seem to be um, built for giants and unoccupied around all over the world. There were a lot of old ladies, and I enjoyed sitting around with these older ladies. Just as whoever that is, playing Paul McCartney, makes up stories about the past uh, as first-hand accounts that get repeated over and over but are not any more true. The same goes for the fake history that was made up in the mid to late 1800s especially. Especially getting to the mid 1800s when ostensibly most of the elderly people speaking in 1929 in these series of interviews lived out their early years. In fact, I contend that many of the people in the interviews are not even the age they claim to be. Very, very few adults are to be found in the early photos from 1850, 1860. The cities were empty. They were completely built up with huge buildings for giants. And these people are trying to cover it up. And they tell you tales and stories. And they lie about almost everything. Gender, their own gender, their age, and... Uh, many, many other aspects. It's very, very interesting. We've caught them here because we've done the research. We know, haven't we? Uh, I've done the research for myself. I know the very things that the research community is questioning. Uh, the very small group of us, um, were, the very things we're questioning in these interviews, they contend and not very convincingly so, I might add. Take a look. There were a lot of old ladies, and I enjoyed sitting around with these older ladies. Yeah, so we'll get to that story. Hey, what can I say to you? He wants me to talk to you. Oh, anything, anything. anything. How old man are you? 82. 82? Sunglasses? Oh, I got that tan. When I was young, I about 15 years old, and I've had it ever since. So how old is he? <laughs> 110. Bull oh, crap. In the sun. That's no lady. All smashed up. It's the aggressive knitter. I am 84 myself. In 1861, I enlisted in the War of the Rebellion. Now, these guys are going to tell you <clears throat> how old they are, which I don't buy it. They don't look that old. You know, some people in, in their 50s or 60s can look 70, 80, but 90, I guess. But these guys don't even look 80, 90. They're going to tell you they are. And they're going to tell you how wonderful war is, how they wish they could have died. There's only seven of our men with more than 250 of the Dutch killed. No prisoners were taken on either side. That's savage. From there, we went to Springfield, Missouri, where we had the Battle of Wilson Creek, where General Lyon was killed on the 10th of August. The bravest man I ever saw, after he was completely surrounded and pulled off of his horse. How'd you see that? He picked up rocks and fought with thousands of men around him. He struck Will Morgan in the face with a rock, and John Morgan shot him with an old-fashioned horse pistol. Killing him. Wonderful. How old are you? I'm 94. Oh, crap. Pretty good age for a young man. Pretty good age for a young man. 
They're going to do a little secret handshake later, the Freemasonic handshake. But first, they have to be given American flags, the flag they fought. So how old are you? 84. 84. You was in the same, the same war. So they're handed flags as they talk about fighting, dying, wishing they could die for this Confederate flag. They're handed the Union flag. <laughs> the same general. I'm the same general. Good man. Good man he was. Yes, he, he was, was never he old. He there. died. To stay. There's a... We didn't enlist for a month or a year, but we enlisted for the war. As long as we lived or as long as the war lasted. That's right. Would you recommend that? Oh, my. So they're holding the flag of northern aggression that defeated them, and they're talking about how wonderful it was, how they enlisted to, to, to die or that until the war was won, where they lost. So what are they doing there? Apparently nobody learned how to play instruments. I think that's the Beverly Hillbillies lady. She went to California from Texas. Happy, happy birthday. Many happy years to you, Grandma. Sounds Tomorrow fake. It's your 100th birthday. Oh, it's certainly she wonderful. She doesn't look 100. Are you feeling fit for a waltz, are you? Fine, no answer. Let's waltz. Fine. <laughs> let's waltz. You're 100, but you can quick step. Oh crap, she's not a hundred. Not buying it. Golf clap. Thank you. Just dump her back in the chair, scene's over. I have known Broadway for over 50 years. I was a was he, like 50 years old? Employed in the office of a new illustrated evening paper. It was a sensation. Pictures of events of the day were printed at least two days after they happened. Nowadays, the illustrated papers print news sometimes a day before they occur. <laughs> <laughs> Later on, the famous Wallach Theater Mola. was established at 13th Street and Broadway. Now, one of the greatest developments in the history of Broadway is this famous newsreel theater. Here, the audible I mean, events. He of told the day you that they did fake news the day before it the world when they screw are up. pictured for the education and the amusement of the entire community. Indoctrination. It is the most remarkable comprehensive and intelligent achievement the, the final outcome in the history of moving pictures yeah by their god Moloch Mr. Cole what kind of parents did you Wh have which guy is 103 the guy on the left or on the right my grandmother and mother. mother what kind of an environment was you raised in well I I lived with my father in different places where he was preaching and tried to be a boy. How much of an education did you have? Public school in the different towns, academy and seminary. What habits have you formed? I never drank anything. <laughs> and I dehydrated. Never don't smoke, make sure I haven't any bad habits. Doesn't smoke mushrooms. What kind of a world would you have if you could have <laughs> it the way you want it? <laughs> have people honest with each other. Yeah. My soul. Me too. Right. There's a free you Mason that can shake. You take the plan. Have it the way you want it. 
have people honest with each other. Yeah. My soul. Me too. Right. There's a Freemason that can shake. Classic Freemason handshake. And then look at this glitch here. What the heck's going on there with this? We'll find out, won't we? When she starts jibber jabbering. Any second now. There. Are you feeling good this morning? Hope yeah. You do. I'm trying to get on I'm my glad. feet again. Feel pretty good. Good. Thankful it's as well as it is. Well, and thank I you. want to tell you that I'm living on the same ground that I've lived on for 75 long years when I come here as an 18-year-old bride. I went to Washington 50 years and a little more ago. Wait, you just I said you were there for 75 there years. I've been been with the presidents. And uh, I learned a great many things up there that uh, I didn't know before. I'll add a little more to it. I was one of the board of lady managers for the Chicago Exposition. So they and I served my full time in, in Chicago and learned a good many things over there. But this is I before been, women's uh, suffrage. I was a delegate to the Tennessee Centennial Exposition. I uh -huh. was a delegate to St. Louis, a, a juror at St. Louis. I think for a North Georgia cracker of my size and age, I've had a pretty good education on that line. That do all right? I was a three-year-old girl when the Indians were moved from this country to Indian territory. Well, when you put it that way, it doesn't sound so bad. I have an indistinct recollection of seeing the red men as they went through the woods, for everything was woods nearly at that time. I have a, a, a distinct Where? impression if a three-year-old child can have it. Nope. Nevertheless, I've been here since that time, and I've seen the march of progress all the way. Tale of tears. At my t at that time, there were, we had only stagecoaches, and sure. we only had horses and buggies. No electric and we trains, had huh? Footback travelers. Usually. Now I've seen it come along all this way, and the airplane goes over this. Oh, my house going on its way, and it's got to be such a common thing. The old girl don't go even out to see if she can look at it. <laughs> what about airships? So, okay, so sh she was supposedly a senator, <laughs> um, and she had high positions in Washington, and then she worked in all these uh, expos. Well, the expos need exposed because they just covered up and hid the already somewhat exposed architecture and technology by putting it in your face and then taking it away from you one way or another. So she admits to being a part of this, um, acts like it isn't something bad, acts like it's something good. She does, doesn't lie about some things, she's lying about everything. In fact, all these people being interviewed are lying about everything except one, maybe. So let's take, for instance, the 1893 Chicago World's Fair. And as you can see, they had electric lighting there, and it was a spectacular thing. Now, we're told, the kids are taught, that this architecture is only a facade over cheap uh, wood, and it burned down, as do all of them. But I say, that's fake news. Uh, they had it in secret. The fairgrounds weren't open to the public in, until 1893, and they only had begun in, I think, 1892, working under extremely tight deadlines, doing what? Building, no, whitewashing existing buildings, in my opinion, because that's all they talk about is the whitewashing. And then they had, they, it's an expo. They expose. The, it's the exposed technology, like this locomotive that still runs it ran in the 1980s, and it was built in the 1830s or 1820s. And it rode on a granite railway while the wood had been compressed to granite because it was antediluvian. That's my opinion. Uh, because they, had, they say that they replaced wood with granite and then switched back. That's bullcrap. 
I'm learning that all these cities had moving walkways. Now, a lot of the stuff for the World's Fairs gets dismantled and then built into the place of the World's Fair before it gets dismantled or destroyed or burned again, somehow burned. Um, but uh, many of the buildings were uh, supposedly rebuilt with permanent materials elsewhere. Bull crap. Those buildings were genuine and they were, they were just whitewashed to look new. It's just clear. So in her time, they had plenty of mud flutters to uh, do the world's fairs around and then blow them up. But nowadays, they just kind of throw the flat earth and the dome firmament out there as a mockery. And just one more thing about this. I'm discovering more and more about these moving walkways. Um, I thought there was one like this, which carried luggage for arriving passengers that I saw in the... Um, basically, you know, petrified in the mud rock of uh, Christchurch, New Zealand. Um, and it seemed to be at an airport, like where airships would land, because it was at a higher elevation. They had all these tunnels and things uh, for luggage is what it seemed like. But I learned about in New York, they had a moving walkway. I think it had five tiers. And so you could just get on one tier and you step from one to the next to the next. And by the time you get to the fifth one, that's the fastest moving one. And you could move your, it would move your butt down Manhattan. You could be on a horse. You could be carrying, you know, a hand cart or just walking, maybe on a bicycle of some sort, you know, uh, whatever they had. And, uh, you know, your horse would be going 50 miles an hour. Because the con the conveyor was going like 40 by, you know, it's like about 10 miles an hour faster. I don't know, maybe not that extreme, but it's ingenious. And they had it in place and it was all built. And they say it was never used. They say it was built, but it was never used. There's stuff like this all over. And these people lie about it. They're liars. They are a liar. Speaking of which... In Pompton Plains, Mars County, New Jersey, July the 27th, 1829, and was brought by my parents to New York City the following year. He's one of the controllers. He's going to tell you how New York City didn't have big buildings, uh, which it did. It had, uh, you know, the classic mud flood architecture. New York City has very materially changed in its appearance on those days. Then it was filled with buildings of a character much lower in height than at present. Now it is with buildings of a massive height and 15 to 20 stories filled and occupied with people who were transacting all sorts of business and to remain as okay, long as I may be of use and benefit to my fellow beings and beings. To Oops. They didn't think that in 2018 we would start to get wise to them and in 2019 good old UAP would catch them. See, I've taken a look back at the New York architecture and these drawings, supposedly just plain drawings of the city skyline, were proposals. They are supposedly proposals. I call them subproposals. <laughs> um, these buildings were massive. They were too big. Now, why would you do an artist's rendition of a brand new building and have an old, sketchy mud flutter next to it that looks like it's about to be torn down by them? And the foundations of many of these buildings are still to be found in the vicinity of where they were originally found. Probably the whole building or most of the building uh, but the cornerstone, like of that bridge, was moved, and there were tunnels dug uh, 
like under the river and elsewhere that were supposedly never used. Now, why would you go through the expense of digging a tunnel and you never use it? Oh, it's a failed engineering project. Well, uh, that excuse just doesn't fly. Uh, you see an airship at the top of this. I don't know what that is. And then. A Statue of Liberty type thing gleaming. It's the electric electricity electricery. Um, because they don't want you to know that you can just pull energy from the atmosphere and it makes light and sound. And I showed that to you in another video of the palace in Cambodia that has that in action yet today. And you don't even know about it because you weren't taught about it. You were taught about how the Chicago 1893 World's Fair was built, uh, you know, by this and that architect. And as I showed in a, another video as well, that the architects uh, were frauds, just like these people telling these stories, saying that the buildings had a character that was low and and they were they were occupied by people. Well, in reality, it's because the buildings were tall and they were unoccupied. The, it, the city was found, founded, you know, barren. One favor, which I can never forget, nor I can never repay. Secret society favors. You get up near I wonder when the war begins. Find himself. Hey, be a good boy. Right here, John. Right here. Yeah. My name is John M. Riley. I was born in Valley Falls, Rhode Island, November the 16th, 1859. I became a fireman in 1881. I have been an engineer for 42 years. And as this is my last run, I must all bid you goodbye. Goodbye, <laughs> John. That's funny. Goodbye, John. Goodbye, John. Goodbye. This is part of the slave class. The controllers are the ones born before 1850. So he's a good egg because they just had him working. Except for being a fireman in 1881, that he might have been. Well, that was probably after a great fire, you know, after they destroyed the mud flood architecture of some city. Fee, fi, o, fum. I smell the blood of a free son. <laughs> Giants. They're tall. And how tall? Just ask. They love it. And, by the way, ask them if they play basketball. 1800s Freemasons. They probably knew about the Giants because there were still quite a few of them around. Um, and even in our time, there are some. But, like, the real Giants were, like, 12 feet up to, you know, around 12 feet tall still at that time. The genetic throwbacks. Now, look at this picture. See on the left? This cloaked figure. <laughs> That is a massive, massive humanoid there. What the heck? And then there's this dinky, like, help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope. Like on the platform waiting to get on a bus or something. Like, what's going on? Now this picture, Martin had this picture. And uh, I noticed these I guys thought, are tall. Uh, and I know they're Sikhs, when I but... Was, um, early teens. He don't re I lost my little girl. Paul McCartney doesn't remember when he got his gu first simple, guitar, early teens. He doesn't even remember how old he was. I remember how old and, I was. Um, yeah, I made up this little song called I Lost My Little Girl. People ask me whether it was about losing my mother. He doesn't know because he's not Paul McCartney. <laughs> which I don't know. Psych psychiatrists might uh, have a field day with that. And others. But um, I certainly didn't think it was at the time. It could have been. Yes. And this was one I, I said to him, well, I got this idea. Like, 
So we change it to just 17, you know what I mean, which makes more sense, even though you probably don't know what I mean. So we changed it to 300 songs. Do you ever forget a lot of the songs that you've written when you hear them? And yeah. I mean, 300 was just the ones I wrote with John. Since Paul then, wrote with John. Lots more. And you do forget them. Yeah. And that is my excuse. <laughs> It needs an excuse for forgetting a lot about his life prior to uh, the switch. All people everywhere should have free energy sources. Electric powers everywhere. Present in unlimited quantities. And can drive the world's machinery without the need for coal. What is that? Energy, and these like energy towers, they look like the um, menorah kind of, it's collecting atmospheric energy. Look at that. How would you build that? Carve it out of stone. When I talk about mud floaters, if you don't know, it's like that. <laughs> you wouldn't build windows and doorways under the ground. So this inundation happened and it, it's, it's all over the world. And so these people, you know, in 1850, they had to get rid of like this Roman, Greco-Roman architecture, this kind of, you know, Doric, Greek-style architecture and domed buildings with uh, electrical arcing uh, energy. collectors they had to dismantle all that actually no they didn't And play the mud flood game. Yeah. All right, we're going to play a little game. Where is this? You can't tell, can you? It's Calcutta, India. Where is this? Where do you think this is? Okay, I'll show you. Bombay, India. Is this the top of a skyscraper? Well, yeah, pretty much. It's the state capital in Des Moines, Iowa. Des Moines. You wouldn't have guessed. All right, we'll continue this game. Oh, does that, is this the top of a skyscraper? Do you, oh, no, no, they built that underground if you want to believe all these tales. Oh, there's a the top of a skyscraper for sure, right? Or at least a tall building, right? Oh, no. <laughs> no, afraid not. Oh, those are the tops of skyscrapers, right? Hmm. Well, I and mean, there's some trees there with that. Oh, no, it's on a sandy beach. That's where they built it. Yeah. Stuff that nobody builds today. And then you can see the eaves or the awnings are much lower. Um, this is in the same general area, but just off in some suburb, you know, this church, they, they have the old stone and then... They have windows underground, which just never really makes sense. Um, the doorways are just huge. The windows are too high to see out of, and they're too big. It's built for giants, I'm telling you. Every city. I mean, look at this doorway. This is in Cleveland. And they have tiny doors. We, we're just tiny. Why would they have this huge archway? Um, and then this little building in Cleveland, this is, uh, they used it in the movie Avengers. It's supposed to be in New York City, but it was in Cleveland, actually. But that's like, that looks like that was something straight out of Greece, you know? So, all right, well, hope you enjoyed it. I thought it was a good video. <laughs> Oh,
surprise, Encore, now, just believe it or not, this symbol, it's not a nuclear symbol, it's a camera roll. And we're going to roll some tape on some other lies that they do, because when they hoax history, they start now. They start hoaxing by preconditioning for future lies. They're lying to you now in the news, and then they lie to you about the past. So an example of how they lie to you now in the news, let's have a look at this. Is it real or is it CGI? But first, let's just address the elephant in the room. Not only is this an encore, but for other reasons, it blows your mind. Let the mind blow continue. It's a rare sighting of the largest shark in the world. The beast is so legendary, she even has a name, Deep Blue. Oh. She was just spotted off the coast of Oahu, and look, a fearless diver is swimming right up to the Great White. They sure do seem to be getting along. The female diver this actually is beyond the him. shark. The diver also poses with the shark for a close-up. Then the diver rests her hand on Deep Blue's head while she shows off a set of razor-sharp teeth. Here, the diver looks like a toy figurine posing lengthwise next to the 20-foot-long shark. More brave divers make their approach. One even pets her. Deep Blue is so famous among shark experts, she has her own Twitter page. She was last spotted three years ago off Guadalupe Island, Mexico. That means Deep Blue traveled 2,500 miles to reach Oahu. You the giant shark is recognizable because of her distinctive markings. Get this, she's 50 years old. We spoke to Ocean Ramsey, the to the model to the the amazing photos and video. By the way, she's also a marine biologist. She was one of the most gentle great whites I've ever encountered, and I've been working with great whites for over 10 years. Um, she's just like a big grandma shark. I mean, by big, I mean massive. It's a rare sighting of the largest shark in the world. The beast is so legendary, she even has a name, Deep Blue. She was just spotted off the coast of Oahu, and look, a fearless diver is swimming right up to the Great White. They sure do seem to be getting along. The female diver actually holds hands with the shark. The diver also poses with the shark for a close-up. Then the diver rests her hand on Deep Blue's head while she shows off a set of razor-sharp teeth. Here, the diver looks like a toy figurine posing lengthwise next to the 20-foot-long shark. More brave divers make their approach. One even pets her. Deep Blue is so famous among shark experts, she has her own Twitter page. She was last spotted three years ago off Guadalupe Island, Mexico. That means Deep Blue traveled 2,500 miles to reach Oahu. The giant shark is recognizable because of her distinctive markings. Get this, she's 50 years old. We spoke to Ocean Ramsey, the swimsuit model captured in these amazing photos and video. By the way, she's also a marine biologist and she's still in awe over her close encounter. She was one of the most gentle great whites I've ever encountered and I've been working with great whites for over 10 years. Um, she's just like a big grandma shark. I mean grandma shark. Yeah like grandma the aggressive knitter. All smashed up. I'm gonna like the the It's a rare the the largest shark Take in the world. Ladder. The beast is so legendary, she even has a name, Deep Blue. She was just spotted off the coast of Oahu, and look, a fearless diver is swimming right up to the Great White. Going to get the castle of the the female it's diver for all. I don't have my daughter. The diver also poses with the shark for a close-up. Then the diver rests her hand on Deep Blue's head while she shows off a set of razor-sharp teeth. Here, the diver looks like a toy figurine posing lengthwise. More brave divers make their approach. Oh, 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 oh. Is so famous among shark experts, she has her own Twitter page. It's a rare sighting of the largest shark in the world. The beast is so legendary, she even has a name, Deep Blue. She was just spotted off the coast of Oahu, and look, a fearless diver is swimming right up to the Great White. They sure 
female diver actually holds hands with the shark. The diver also poses with the shark for a close up. Then the diver rests her hand on Deep Blue's head while she shows off a set of razor sharp teeth. Here, the diver looks like a toy figurine posing lengthwise that pets her. Deep Blue is so famous. <laughs> shark experts, she has her own Twitter page. I wish you could just shut your big yapper! Island, Mexico. That means Deep Blue traveled 2,500 miles to reach Oahu. The giant shark is recognizable because of her distinctive markings. Get this, she's 50 years old. We spoke to Ocean Ramsey, the swimsuit model captured in these amazing photos and video. By the way, she's also a marine biologist and she's still in awe over her close encounter. She was one of the most gentle great whites I've ever encountered and I've been working with great whites for over 10 years. Um, she's just like a big grandma shark. I mean, by big, I mean massive. Captured in these amazing photos and video. By the way, she's also a marine biologist and she's still in awe over her close encounter. She was one of the most gentle great whites I've ever encountered and I've been working with great whites for over 10 years. Um, she's just like a big grandma shark. I mean, by big, I mean massive. The giant shark is recognizable because of her distinctive markings. Get this, she's 50 years old. We spoke to Ocean Ramsey, the swimsuit model captured in these amazing photos and video. By the way, she's also a marine biologist and she's still in awe over her close encounter. She was one of the most gentle great whites I've ever encountered and I've been working with great whites for over 10 years. Um, she's just like a big grandma shark. I mean, by big, I mean massive. So, all right. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. That was a good video.